Hey, it's Dougie at Valto, and I'm going to be giving you my top five reasons that you should be using your SharePoint as a QMS system. So the first reason is that it's a centralized document management system. I mean, it's really easy for everyone to get access to it. Gone are the days of where you've got documents living in multiple different places. Maybe it's stored locally on your computer or a shared server somewhere. Maybe it's on colleagues' computers. And you end up with duplications of documents living all over the place. The benefit of SharePoint is that you've got a single source of truth. Everything lives in one place. So I know that I can go to my control document SharePoint site and I can find all the relevant policies and procedures that I need as part of my QMS system. My second reason that you should be thinking about using SharePoint for your QMS system is the simplicity of the customizable workflows. Now, there's a whole host of different things you might want to automate when it comes to your QMS system. Things like reminders of when policy documents are coming up for review, um, submitting for approval processes, things like that. Now, Valto actually sell this QMS system pre-built for you, built into SharePoint. It's just a plug-in, um, here you go type of product um, that we sell at a fixed price. Um, but essentially, we have customized workflows in here, as I say, which when you submit a document um, or publish it, so to speak, it will actually be automatically emailed to whoever's marked as the approver against the document for them to approve. Obviously, they get an option. They can either approve or reject. You can have that message, that approval come through either in Outlook as an email, or um, the other option is that you could come through inside of Teams um, as well as an approval uh, message. So they can either approve or reject. If it rejects, it goes back to whoever it was uh, sent it. Typically, it's the reviewer. Um, and if they approve it, it would automatically set the approval to be marked as approved, increment the next major version number. And then most importantly, it'll actually set the next review date automatically. So this is something I think is really cool about this workflow process. So each of the different documents inside of my QMS system will have their own review period. Now, typically we set these as kind of categories that you can select from, either say six months, 12 months, 24 months, 36 months, whatever it is that you, you need it to be. And then at that point of approval, as I say, we automatically calculate the next review date. So it'll take the approval date. So say, for example, today's date is the 30th of the 1st, 2025. If it was 12 months from now, it automatically set the review date to be the 30th of January 2026, uh, as an example. Then we have another workflow, which is working in the background, which is looking at each of the documents. And if it passes that review date, it automatically puts it into draft mode and we'll send an email to whoever's in the reviewer field to say, hey, come check out this document. It needs to be reviewed and it needs to go through that uh, process. We're making sure we're staying on top of our documents and that they're being updated on a regular basis. So that's why to me, the customizable workflow elements of SharePoint using Power Automate is so important to a QMS system. The next reason why SharePoint makes such a fantastic QMS software is the fact that it has the ability to have audit trails built directly into SharePoint. Now, this is a standard issue feature that comes with SharePoint. You just need to essentially enable it. And what this will allow you to do is to track all of the changes that are made to your documents inside of SharePoint, uh, whether who changed it, the date that it was changed, um, and, and so forth. And it's all tracked as what they call version history. So let's take a look at that. Version history can easily be accessed for any document. So just by clicking on the three dots next to a document, you'll see that, that like a little pop-out window will appear. And then we have this option down here called version history. Now, by clicking on that, a separate window will show up. And this is essentially your audit trail to show you exactly what has changed with this specific document, um, starting with the version number. So as I said before, we can have different version numbers in SharePoint. You can have what we call major versions, which are like one, two, three, four, five, and they are whole numbers. Then you have what we call minor versions, which are typically used to track drafts uh, and some edits. And they're kind of 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4. Within reason, there's no kind of limit to this. Obviously, um, we, we don't want, want to necessarily have thousands of versions of a document because every version does actually use up some storage space. But typically, um, you, you can track this with, with, uh, with every kind of change that you're making in the document. We can see when it was last modified. Um, even who last modified it, uh, the size of the document as well. So this is quite important because say, for example, 
if you wanted to go back, you can actually even restore a document from a previous point in time. So by scrolling back, you, you should be able to see that the document gets smaller over time. Um, and if, say, for example, all of a sudden um, it, it changed and it, and it wasn't in the order that you thought, say, for example, you're working on version 30 of a document and you notice actually the size is much lower than version 29 was, then you know that maybe something has been removed from that document and you can even go back and restore it from a previous point in time. Now, by restoring, you don't wipe out, say in this case, if I was to click on restore, I wouldn't wipe out version 31. I would just create version 32 from the content of version 30. Um, so it always keeps track of everything that you're doing um, and it makes it nice and easy to provide a full audit trail of what has changed in the document and when. Integration with Microsoft 365 and the Microsoft Office suite of products. So what I'm talking about here is like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, all the rest of those different kind of documents um, and apps that you can open up directly from SharePoint. Now, this is so fundamental, um, but it's worth kind of mentioning that if you're looking at third-party QMS systems, sometimes they don't play very nicely with um, Word documents and things like that. So if you are using the Microsoft Office suite already for things like Word documents, Excel, things like that, then SharePoint is going to play much nicer with that. It's so simple to create brand new documents by clicking on new. You can see here it's automatically integrated with Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and so forth. You can, you can create documents directly from here. Or if I wanted to edit a document, I can select or click a document and click on open, and I can even choose to open it in the browser version. So if you're using Microsoft 365, you can open Word documents directly in the browser or open in the app, which is the desktop app on your computer. Now, this is just purely preference, whether you want to work inside of the browser um, or if you want to open up the desktop app version of uh, Word or Excel, for example, it's totally up to you. Other integrations which are really useful is, for example, because our documents live inside of SharePoint, we can even get to them from Outlook. So if I was sending an email, I could quickly uh, grab the document from the, the sort of online sources and put it directly into my email. So it's integrated to the whole suite of, of Microsoft and makes things so much easier on a day-to-day -day basis. I just wanted to pause here to let you know that we do offer a free consultation. Um, now, if you're interested in this, there's a link in the description below, and we can talk you through our pre-built QMS system in SharePoint uh, and give you a no obligation quote for its deployment. My next reason of why you should be considering SharePoint for your QMS system is the simple navigation. Um, now, I, I don't mean just necessarily the sort of SharePoint navigation bars, but I mean the search engines are so powerful that you can type in um, the sort of name of a document um, or, or contents from a document, and it will quickly and easily find that for you. There's so many different ways that you could break down the navigation to make it as simple as possible for people to access, but I'm just going to show you a couple of different examples. So SharePoint has a number of navigation bars. We have what we call the, the hub navigation bar across the top, which is like a mega menu, which makes it nice and easy to jump into specific areas of um, documents or your QMS system. We have the navigation bar on the left-hand side. Sometimes it appears uh, underneath here as well, depending on the design of your SharePoint site. But essentially, again, we've got another area that we can have navigation built directly into our system. Something else I see a lot of our clients doing is actually building a SharePoint page, um, which basically lists out, say, for example, you're building QMS for ISO 9001. You might want to list out, for example, the structure, almost the index of ISO 9001 um, like this. And then for each of the documents you have in your SharePoint site, um, you can then provide a hyperlink directly to that document. So although it's been controlled by that system in that library that we were looking at before, you can access it through a really simple navigation like this. And this makes it so much easier when you've got an order as well. And you've got the orders that are coming in and they just want to find key documents. So rather than digging around inside of a big list of documents, you can present them a nice and simple user interface like this to navigate to the key documents. And that actually brings me on to my final point, which is all about external sharing. So as I was mentioning before, we want to make your life as easy as possible when it comes to auditing and having the auditors reviewing your documents because time is money and essentially if it's going to take forever to find these documents and get through to them, it's going to cost you more time in that kind of audit process. Um, and more time obviously means more cost, more money. 
Um, so one of the cool features which is built into SharePoint is the ability to have external sharing. Now, quite often when our clients are going through an audit, often they will just bring up that kind of SharePoint interface I was showing you before and then have an auditor kind of sit over their shoulder and look at documents. But you can also, uh, at no extra cost, bring in those auditors as external users to your SharePoint so that they can get access to those documents directly themselves. You could even share the whole of the sort of QMS, a control document system, directly to them if you wanted to. Or if it was just an individual file, you could do that as well. So by selecting the document here and then clicking on share, you'll then see there's a whole host of options that we can do to share documents. Now, this isn't just external. This is internal as well. So we've got a couple of options here. Um, the first one is anyone. This means anyone with this link will be able to access this document. And that's why I mean it's perfect for an auditor. If they want to see just one specific document, you could select it, click on anyone, click on to apply and generate a link and either automatically send them uh, an email. So this is actually asking me about expiration dates. So I can actually even choose if I wanted to, to have a expiration date set against the documents. If I only wanted them to have access to that document for 30 days, I could do. And that's probably the best thing to do if you are working with external parties. You don't want to just give them uh, access forever. Um, as I say, we can then type in the person's uh, email address, send them a message, and that would automatically generate an email and send it to them. Or you can click on that copy link button, and then that link can be used to either paste into a Teams message, chat, or some kind of text message, WhatsApp, something that you're sending as an instant message um, that you can use that link for people to access. But as I say, that sharing ability means that they can easily get access to this set of documents. They can find what they need to based on certain filters or groups. So say, for example, if they were looking um, at a particular case where they wanted to see um, based on an approver, say, for example, we could then use this to filter to say, I'm only interested in where Hugh is the approver of a particular set of documents. And then we can apply that filter and filter those documents down just to find that specific um, document. But I say we can use any of these columns across the top up here to act as our filters. We can add within reason as many different um, sort of columns in here. So these are just some examples that other clients have kind of requested um, in the past before. So things like um, key policies, is it a key policy? Yes or no? Again, being able to find the key policies really quickly. Retention policies. So if you wanted to apply a retention, so it will make sure that a document cannot be deleted for a certain period of time, or even the sensitivity labels where it locks it down and encrypts the document at um, the document level. So even if someone was to download this document and take it home with them, put them on their home laptop, if it is marked as, say, uh, sensitive uh, company data, they will not be able to open it or access um, that document because it's encrypted at the document level. So these are all the main kind of key reasons, but as you can see, it's very powerful. Um, it's really um, a very advanced kind of system. And a lot of people already have Microsoft 365, and they already have SharePoint. So it's worth considering building out your QMS system inside of SharePoint. As I previously mentioned, we have this system that I've shown you today, pre-built, ready to deploy directly to your SharePoint for a fixed price. If you want a free consultation to discuss this further, there's a link in the description below. And of course, please like the video um, and subscribe to our channel for more future content. Thank you.